Adam, Adam. Oh, 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 Nas Music Network Magazine. Hi, Stuart from Knott's Music Network Magazine here, and I'm here with Pruisa. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Good. Right, so uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Parisa. I live in Nottingham. I'm from Nottingham. I was born on the QMC. And when I came back from university, I started working at the maze. Um, and I kind of worked my way up in the system. And I started putting on live music events there, which has now been the nine-year beast called Acoustical. Um, I'm also a performing artist. I'm a singer. I've toured with Origin One played in different countries and different cities oh, across okay, the UK. Nice. I used to be a backing vocalist for Jedi, Ai Tafari, a Malawian Rasta who was residing in Nottingham. Uh, I'm a solo artist and I've played quite a lot of gigs. Um, and I was also a partner in Can't Stop, Won't Stop, which is a hip hop soul business with Joe Buddha, a record okay. producer. Uh, we're part of really big Grammy award winning artists in Nottingham. And really the vibe is about like giving local, local talent with acoustical, it's more like the local, underground, bubbling artists. Um, and Can't Stop Waste Up is more of the Grammy Award winning artists. So right, okay. we, we had a nice balance at some point where we were putting locals on alongside these big artists and it just created a bit of you know awareness. Nice, yeah, it's kind of similar to what the likes of Rescue Rooms do, isn't it? They have touring bands and then yeah. their support acts are, yeah. are local bands, which is obviously very cool for the support acts. Yeah, very cool. Cool. Okay, so um, you mentioned acoustical air and that's principally what you're here to talk about. Yes. Um, so tell us what to expect from an acoustical night. What, what makes an acoustical night? Acoustical is special because when you enter the room, you're leaving this universe and you're going into a different place where we've got tables and chairs, tablecloths, candles, fairy lights, swaths of fabric, decor, um, decorated stage and props. And then we have very like well-selected performing artists who will kind of showcase their original material. Um, it's very much about creating an atmosphere where the audience gets quite a lot from it. They can just sit sit down comfortably, have a drink. It's not like a drinky, drinky, boozy one, um, although people do get absolutely wasted. Um, <laughs> we usually have some food being sold outside as okay. well. Um, and like for a lot of years, like um, Georgie Rose, Jake Bug, um, Gallery 47, who's playing again soon, um, and a lot of rock and indie artists played. But now we've stripped it right the way down to kind of the jazz, soul, R&B, hip hop, reggae sometimes flavors. Um, and that's mostly because like there's, that's for me, it's an underrepresented kind of field in terms of live performances locally. And I really love rappers and singers and kind of hip hop music. So it was kind of putting a spotlight on what happens in Nottingham because there's so many, there's so many artists of that kind of style living here. Um, so yeah, that's what you can expect, a bit of jazz. But basically, so that's you give them a forum to uh, perform, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. So um, it started at the maze? It started at the maze in 2009, um, in March, April. Um, it was just Acoustic Monday. And some artists came, Lance Hume played his sitar, um, Daniel Beswick, who was part of a group called 25 Past the Skank, he played like a solo acoustic set and blew everybody away. And then um, did the next one and Jake Bug played, <laughs> I think, and he was like 15 or something at the time. Um, and he was, it, it was instantly a hit. Um, there was loads of artists that kept coming like that. People were like, wow, they're really good, they're really good, kind of thing. And it just, they were just an ordinary kids and young people that were going to school or college and doing a bit of music on the side and some of them have just phew, blown. Nice. nice. That must be quite satisfying for you. Yeah, it is, but I can't really claim anything towards their fame and glory. I'll just name drop them in order to sell more tickets. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Come and discover the next Jake Bug. But yeah, no, I mean, I guess a credit to Acoustical and to myself is that I take a lot of risks with booking artists and um, I'll go for the un unsung hero, the unearthed gem, kind of somebody will like catch my ear, like that's how I met Fraser Lowry, if you know Lowry. Nice. Um, he is not from Nottingham, I think he's from Oxford, but he's living in Nottingham now. And he was just playing an acoustic set at the maze. And I was, I went to the toilet and I came out of the toilet. I was like, this angel is singing on stage. Like who is he? I walked up to him and gave him a business card. 
and then ended up managing him for about a year after that and he's he's a phenomenal talent and he even said to me I was nearly gonna quit I was nearly gonna give up before you came and spoke wow. to me so it's little things like that like kind of giving people a little shove to say you're really talented like more people need to see you come on my stage it's not an open mic um, unless we have scheduling an open mic do you know what I mean you're booked to perform because I personally want to see more of you and I want more people to see you because with um, like my friends, a lot of my friends are um, record producers, DJs, fellow artists, guitarists, um, venue bookers, bar owners. Do you know what I mean? This, these are the kind of networks you accidentally build over time. So they come to the gigs. So it's a good opportunity for these um, artists to get seen and they get booked somewhere else and somewhere else and the collaborations occur and yeah, that's just... Great, perfect. 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 So when you, when you started it, did you... Was it just a case of, right, I'm going to put a night on and see what happens and then <laughs> nine years later, mm. here you still are? Or did you always yeah. have a kind of a long-term plan? Or? Mm. I, yes and no. When I started it, the what I really wanted to do was to put on stage people that I'd heard were good but they weren't playing anywhere and there wasn't really anywhere for them to play this is like acoustical started a year before acoustic rooms at rescue room started right. do you know what I mean so back in the day I think you could have like um occasional kind of gigs at the maze which suited acoustic but Gaz and Steph who were managing it said to me look we get loads of acoustic artists but we don't know how to fit them in because they were dealing with lots of punk and ska and yeah, yeah. big reggae bands come in so I took a few of those, then I asked a few friends, um, and then the week after I was getting like some contact, oh, I came to your night, or I heard about this new thing that you're doing. So the month after we put another one on. And then it kind of rolled like once a month on a th Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. And then Ben Rose from the Alley Cafe, an angel microbrewery, he came up to me and said like, can you put it on at, in the Alley Cafe? I said, okay, cool. So we had one that was free entry and it was either upstairs in like the small settings or downstairs in the courtyard we bring a sound system have like a canopy and just like all these different kind of artists just kept kept coming out of the woodwork then i'd be like looking for them and really early on in 2009 i was thinking nottingham could really blow up like it could be absolutely massive um and that kind of motivated me to keep going and just thinking like people need to hear these artists like more like something big could happen something big could happen for acoustical from i'm not from london for farmyard records yeah. for soundism for yeah. all these different like groups um and we all kind of started working together as well so every hockley hustle acoustical had a stage or do you know what i mean soundism and acoustical collaborated farmyard like we we all just used to feed each other artists as well like still do I get a lot of emails from different types of um, artists and I think that's not going to fit what we're doing, yeah. but here are some people to contact and then, you know, okay. we, I felt that we were creating an ecosystem um, and now I still believe that and I still, I'm kind of scared to leave Nottingham just in case something blows <laughs> and I like miss out on the buzz, <laughs> but um, really what I think, um, what, what our aims are now as Acoustical is to bring outstanding music from across the world into Nottingham and to take Nottingham music out across the world. Yes, you talked about, um, when, we, when we spoke before, you talked about taking it yeah. nationwide. Yeah, I mean, I want to travel and I love music, so it kind of works hand in hand. Um, I w the dream, and I'm putting this into the universe repeatedly because <laughs> apparently that works, um, the yeah. dream would be to have one in Paris, in yeah. Marseille, in Lisbon, maybe in Spain, in Germany, perhaps Berlin, um, in New York, maybe in different African countries, like, do you know what I mean? And just kind of move it across the world because in each of these places, there's going to be shroves of local talent, so much local talent. and. Another big thing about acoustical is we encourage collaboration. So there's been quite a lot of acts that have performed together for the first time and probably the only time together on stage at acoustical. Or we've put people together, like Ben and Kai, who performed for vocab. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they're now going all over everywhere, playing as an acoustic duo. We've got, on the birthday gig coming up in April, we've got Georgia Copeland and Nadia Latoya performing together. They're best friends, but they've never really performed together. Right, okay. um, and they're both outstanding R&B soul kind of vocalists. 
So just like, you know, little things like, oh, that'd be nice to hear. Bam, put them together, book them on stage. Um, so really, if you get to travel across the world, just imagine all the different potential collaborations you can have. Yeah, there's no end of it. I mean, so you would see putting on local artists and maybe a mix of local artists and yeah. not artists. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. And local could be, when I mean, you think about the world on that kind of scale, like, local New York and then you could get some like other different states together and like you know someone from Denver someone from Los Angeles that kind of thing and then yeah a couple of people from England nice, maybe yeah. from France or whatever it's just I just think like giving people opportunity to do great things and um, music is very healing for people as well to so to just encourage that aspect yeah I mean it's, it's great what you do because there uh, where, where is a decent music scene in Nottingham and mm. like you say that but the likes of I'm not from London have mm -hmm. certainly kind of helped build yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they are. Institutions. They are. And um, but yeah, but to see someone doing a specific kind of like a very targeted genre night is quite mm -hmm. nice. Um, and I know we spoke about this a little bit. It was um, up in the maze. They obviously have open band nights, but. And I, I, like, when I was starting playing in Nottingham, I, I certainly played the maze a couple of times because essentially it was straightforward to get a gig mm -hmm. um, on their Knots in a Nutshell night. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know they do kind of have curated nights, but I really like the idea of having a night that is just one thing. So you know what you're getting. And yeah. like, as we were saying before, it really helps the artist, doesn't it? Because it's like, yeah, them, they, people from uh, other bands, like their fans have come along and they might like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm in a completely different genre mm -hmm. and they're not going to be into what I'm exactly. doing at all, so. Yeah, it's just a bit more focus. Having said, acoustical isn't always strictly acoustical. It's sometimes electrical. Um, there's often drum kits. There's always a wide range of genres. It, it's kind of morpho, isn't it? Because I guess the acoustical name, which you, you can tell us where they came from in a minute. Yeah. But that, I guess that name came when you were doing the acoustic stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it started with acoustic. Um, <laughs> I called it Acoustic Monday. And uh, Lance Hume said, oh, when's your next acoustic tickle? So I called the next one Acoustic Tickle. And then Steph Kirkup, manager of The Maze, Lance Hume and Dan Beswick from 25 Pass all phoned me up separately and been like, oh, you know, I've been thinking about acoustic tickle, just call it acoustical. I would never have thought of that, I swear Job done. done. Job done. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's genius. So just called it that and then, you know, people always love the name and I, c I have nothing to do with the name. I bet, you know, acoustical doesn't necessarily mean acoustic is sound, so it still works yeah, for true. everything, really. That's true. Yeah, it's always a bit of a wild card. I mean, for instance, with Gallery 47 playing on this lineup, he's not jazz or soul or reggae, but he's going to come and play because I love Jack and it's been years since I've seen him and he was there right from the start of Acoustical. He said he played his first gig for Acoustical. So he'll be a wild card, but there's going to be a lot of people in that room that don't even know who he is, whereas he's got quite a huge fan base. Right, okay. So. Like, yeah, he's got his own fan base, which is completely different, but just for that old time's sake, going to put him on. And then the rest of the artists are more the soul and jazz and the reggae. So, yeah, what else is... Uh, you're obviously referring to the, um, the birthday. birthday. Yes, yeah. the ninth birthday. birthday. So what else is in store for that night? Well, we're calling it the botanical birthday because... Fingers crossed and budget permitting, we're going to turn it into like a nice botanical garden in there. So, oh, nice. yeah, and then hopefully we're going to have some vegan dessert and some hot food. It's a really good DJ, DJ Gaz. Um, like I said, Nadia and Georgia are collaborating. Then we've got um, an artist from London coming up called um, Boadi. <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. It's Bowadi, Bowadi, and he's like a UK D'Angelo. That's been described. Um, right. He's got a beautiful soul jazz voice. Um, and to top it up, we've got Tony Minviel, who is a jazz FM DJ and a Leicester resident. He's going to be hosting the whole night. So he's a, quite a big shot, really. So, yeah, we're very lucky. Nice. It's just going to be a really cool. I think just bringing loads of people together to have a good time, that's what it's about. And that's at the maze? Yes, on Sunday, the 8th of April. There you go. What time does it start? Thank you. It uh, starts at 6. Okay, great. <clears throat> We've talked about everything yes. I had on my list. Is there anything else you so want to talk about? What I want really is anybody that wants to perform at Acoustical to just send their music. Um, anybody that might want to work with, volunteer with Acoustical, come forward. Like, 
there's plenty of job roles for everybody so if you're interested in getting involved contact info at acoustical.com and yeah i'm sure we'll fit you in nice okay and any kind of acts and as you said earlier yeah if they're not suitable for what you're doing i pass them on yeah brilliant definitely awesome yeah check out the website there's like lots of info on there great thank you very much <laughs> thank <sir>. you <laughs>